worship. Thank you for uh, having me here today. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. It is an honor to be here tonight with you in the Shabbat. The things I'm about to share with you is going to change the very DNA of your understanding and thoughts. When you say heart in the Greek or the English, it has lab in the Hebrew, which is the intellectual knowledge center of knowledge of your spirit man. It's something you take with you in the afterlife. Because it's the knowledge of your spirit man where spiritual beings that have a... Have a have a, a, a mind, will, emotion, or a thought pattern, an inner being, and lives in this fleshly tabernacle body. So the things I'm about to share with you are going to have an impact to you for the rest of your life. And the way you think, the way you speak, we have been fooled by the, the knowledge of our, of our forefathers, inheriting lives of information and not questioning it. So tonight... I ask that you show how Mashiach name that you're under, that you're under the high places of your mind of preconceived information will be cast down. Imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Elohim. I ask that the Ruach Kadosh, the Ruach of Yahuwah will come in and melt away all the, the Windows XP because in order to get Windows 7, XP has to be deleted. So we're going to delete all the paganism and all the preconceived knowledge of, of Christianos or from the words of the founding so-called Catholic Orthodox fathers, which they're not my fathers, or the Roman Catholic bishops and cardinals, they're not mine, or, or even the Reformationists, they're not mine either. Abraham, Ishaq, Yagov, Kifa, Shaul, all these ones in our scriptures of the new covenant and the old covenant, first covenant, are our founding fathers if you could graft it into the house of Israel. Tonight, I, I want to share this with you with conviction and blushing conscience. And I pray that you receive this tonight with, for edification and also to return and give it to others. Go with me to Romans chapter 5, verse 6. And I just pray that the anointing that's here in this room will be imparted to you by CD, DVD, or by stream. And you receive the revelation understanding. Romans 5, chapter 5, verse 6. It is written. Let's look at verse 5 of chapter 5. And the expectation does not disappoint because the love of Elohim has been poured out in our hearts or love by the set apart Ruach, which was given to us. And we were still weak. Messiah in due time died for the wicked. Verse 7. Well, one shall hardly die for a righteous one, though. Possibly for a good one, someone would even have the encouragement or encouraged to die for. But Elohim proves his own love for us. In that while we were yet still sinners, the Messiah died for us. Much more than having now been declared right by his blood, his atoning blood. We shall be saved through the wrath, through him. What wrath? The wrath to come. It says in the scriptures and all through Roman, Romans that we're not appointed to wrath to come. And the word tribulation is, the, is it's a, it's a clean word for those that suffer for righteousness sake. And them that live Elohim shall suffer tribulation. But we're not appointed to wrath because we're through washed in the atoning blood. Verse 10. For if being enemies we were restored by favor, not G-R-A-C-E, with Elohim through the death of his son, much more having been restored into favor, precious favor benefit, we have been saved by his life. And not only this, but we also exalt in Elohim through our master, Yahushua Messiah, through whom we have now received the restoration or the atonement of restoration of favor. It's the precious favor benefit. That's the Hebrew, that's the Greek word 1435 Doran and the Hebrew word Shen, C-H-E-N of 2580. And what we're about to find out how they plastered over and rewrote another word on top. And all you got to do is get a hammer of your Amonah, your belief, and break the false plaster off and see the real word, real word underneath it. Even with the Strong's Hebrew Greek recorders or an e sword, and discover something. They call them codexes. Secret codes for them to know and us not to. Okay? 
And they operate under degrees of knowledge like masons and secret societies. So I want you to understand this. This is an understanding for you to receive the Hebrew Messiah and be grafted into the house of Israel. Let's go to now to Lucas chapter 2 verse 40. Lucas chapter 2 verse 40. I'm going to show you a mystery. It says, if you read it in the, in the, in the Reformation understanding, it has a contradiction. But if you change it to the Hebraic understanding, it has an understanding, okay? And the child grew and became strong in spirit, being filled with prudent understanding or knowledge, and the favor of Elohim was upon him. In other translations, in the Catholic and the, and the Reformation translation, King Imus, they use the word G-R-A-C-E, grace. And if you're saved by it, why would our Messiah need, need to have it if he's the Messiah and never had sin in his life. People say you're forgiven of your sins and you're saved by the G-R-C-E. Well, hello, why does he need it? Because that's not the proper word for him or us. The word is, it's precious, favor, benefit. It's a benefit of Elohim was upon him. And his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the festival of Pishah, Pesach, the Passover, okay? Now let's go to Yochanan, John, chapter 1, verse 14. And the word became flesh and pitched his tent among us, and we saw his esteem, esteem as of a... a the only brought forth of the Father complete in precious, it's favor and truth. They use the word G-R-A-C-E. I'm correcting it. In Doran, 1435, it's precious, benefited favor. In the Hebrew mindset, it is hen, H-C-H-E-N, E-N, excuse me, hen, hen, 2580, which means precious favor benefit. Okay. And it goes on and it says this. Verse 15, Yochanan bore witness of him and cried out saying, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me has become before me because he was before me and out of his completeness we all did receive favor upon favor. Verse 17, for the Torah was given through Moshe the Torah was given by through Moshe, but the favor, not G-R-A-C-E, the precious favor benefit, and the truth, the truth came through Yahushua, the Messiah. Now, let me give you some understanding here. In the Reformation Catholic, Orthodox, Roman, Reformation Catholic understanding, a preconceived understanding, they use the, the pagan goddess G-R-A-C-E. In the Hebraic understanding, we know that favor and that Hebrew word, favor, means atonement, blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And the way you get the show atonement of blood, you have the precious favor benefits through that blood to be forgiven. It's a benefit. And we're going to explain a little bit more to you on that. Go with me to the Bereshit, chapter 6, verse 8. If you've got a King James or other translation, Genesis 6, 8. And I'm going to give you in a Hebrew mentality understanding, uh, uh, give you some Hebraic revelation understanding. I'm really excited to share this message. I feel the Ruah of Yahuwah in the presence of us. And the, His Ruah of Yahuwah will come upon you and give you revelation. Not the uh, uh, Hali, the, the, the pagan goddess holy, and the ghost, that's an exiled dead person's spirit. We're talking about the Ruah set apart spirit or the Ruah HaKadosh or the Ruah of Yahuwah. 45 times mentioned. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 8, Bereshit. And look what it says. But Noach found, they say grace, G-R-A-C-E. They're saying grace? A, a Greek pagan word that didn't even exist of a deity? Pan, 
plastered on top and rewoven on top of a good word in Hebrew 2580, chen, which means precious, benefited favor. For Noah found favor in the eyes of Yahuwah, but it took a hundred years to build the ark to escape judgment. Displaying a favorable disposition, a state of benefit and favor, pleasant, precious, well-favored, morally qualified. Noah found morally qualifications to go through mitbah, water immersion, uh, go through the water and persecution. Okay? And it was a benefit of favor given to him. That's the Hebrew understanding. But it took a hundred years. You get this? He had to build the ark. He had received the precious favor. And he had the benefit of the understanding through the help of messengers to build this ark to go through that year cycle of water. But it took a hundred years. It wasn't something instantly done through a magic word. It took time and it took effort and sweat and love and tears. But it was a precious benefit. And this is the Hebrew word 2580, Shen. Found favor in the eyes. We have found favor, precious benefit, favor. Moral qualification through the blood, atoning blood of the Messiah, cleansing us. Let's go on to Zechariah, same Hebrew word. 2580. And we're going to look through another anointing of, of, of protection for a persecution of Jerusalem. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. In verse 9, and it shall be in that day that I seek to destroy all the goy, the nations, the strangers that come against. Jerusalem, this is in the future. And I shall pour on the house of Dawid and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem a ruah of favor or hen, 2580, hen and prayers, a spirit of favor and prayer. The word G R A C did not exist. Let's look at the Hebrew understanding. An atonement. He would pour the spirit of favor and prayers and they shall look on me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourns for his son's son and they shall be bitterness over him as a bitterness over his firstborn they, their veil will be turned their eyes will be open and they will know who they pierced but the spirit of favor and prayer should come upon them you Christians go around to Jerusalem and pray all these pagan words pagan deities can't even blow a shofar right you get goosebumps you come back here you went on a mission you didn't do nothing you didn't bust a grape and some backslidden Yehudi your tour guide or 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 or, or somebody you tipped in a hotel or a taxi person might say a prayer with you and he's just bearing with you to make money the Israelites go to Shiva they go to schools and they know all the pagan words of Catholicism and the Reformation has brought it into the, the world we have in today of Christianity. Those pagan words. They know these stuff. That's why you can't, you, they laugh at you. you. You cannot provoke an Israelite or Yehudi or any tribe of Israel to jealousy with your pagan deities. You can't do it. It does not happen. They're going to receive the spirit of favor and prayers. You want, you want to pray for revival for them to come, the veil to come off? Pray this prayer. That they have moral qualifications to enter in and receive the, the precious favor benefit. They understand this means atonement. We don't, or the Christian world does, I do. Okay? Let's look at now... The word grace begins in Luke chapter 2, verse 40, where we read earlier. And it ends in Revelation 22, 21. Matthew, Yahu, Matthew and Mark did not have G-R-A-C-E in it. And even though Luke, Mar Marcos was part, 
Big percentage Greek and Aramaic and Latin. Names, places, things don't change. But Netanyahu was written in Hebrew. It was written in Hebrew, but it still had some, some of the Latin and Greek words because of the, what they were describing, person, places, and things. Okay? But it started in Luke chapter 240 where they plastered over this word, G-R-A-C-E, the pagan goddess. Okay? It's 5485. The root word is 5463, Carol. 5486, charisma, charismatica, charm. 5463, carillo. Joyfully, grateful, charismatica gifts. They say divine gravity, that's, that's, oh, that's a weird word there. But it's, it's, it's dealing with spiritualism and gifts. Okay? Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. As you go to chapter 2, I want you to understand this. You can go to Wikipedia or Google. You can pull up books. The three graces or grace. Its relation is the mother goddess of Charis, Charitius with a K or it in Greek or Latin, or Charitius or Charisma. Female goddesses with a temple, and temple sacrifices and giving of money, dealing with the Olympics as well that we just had. Pagan deities, naked females, erotic sexual immorality going on. Gracious, grace, keros, 5484. They replaced it and plastered that word right on, pancaked on top of a good clean word, Doran, which we're going to learn. A, a, a benefit favor. Let's look at, um, and one of the things you need to understand is that the root word is 5921 for charis, for grace, okay? 5921 and 5919. But your Strong's Hebrew Greek Accordance and your E-Sword and anything that you have available at some Christian burying store or whatever only goes up to 5624. So where's 59? 19 and 21 at. They're just not going to let you know. Just like the word Christos, the re word is in the 59s too. You have to dig in deeper to understand where those words come from and what deities they come from. These are the codexes. They leave you up to they leave you on a cliffhanger and let you fall off. And you say, well, I don't know. I, I, I'm all right. I got my congregation. I'm doing okay. I got my, my, my the B-L-E-S-S, Bladosians, Blad, Bladosians. Blood ritual of good luck. Okay? Let's look at um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5. And this is what we get. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Messiah by, they say G-R-A-C-E, but it's favor. And it's, and it's 5485, you have been saved. But we know that it's the atoning blood is the only way you get forgiveness of sins to be saved from sin. You can be saved from a car accident through prayer. You can be saved from cancer through prayer. You can be saved from diabetes through prayer or from a seizure through prayer or through somebody's going to hurt you and attack you. You can be saved from that moment through prayer. But to be saved from forgiveness with your sins, it's the atoning blood. Without the blood, there is no forgiveness of sins and there is no salvation. Without, without the toning blood of the Hebrew Messiah. But the real word is precious favor, benefit. And the Hebraic understanding, we know and understand clearly that that is the toning blood. We understand that, but they pancake, they plaster this word over G-R-A-C-E, the pagan gods. Verse 6, it raised us up together and made us sit together in the Shamayin and Messiah Yahushua. Verse 7, in order to show in the coming ages the exceeding riches of his favor and kindness toward us in Messiah Yahushua. It says, exceeding riches of his favor and kindness towards us. It is precious favor, benefit, and kindness towards us in Messiah Yahushua. Verse 8. Now in verse 8, by favor, for by favor you have been saved. 
That word, or they put the word G-R-A-C, the pagan goddess, it is no more 5485 like in verse 5, it is 5486. And 5486 is charismatica or charisma, the other female goddess. But it's really precious favor and benefit. Been saved through belief and not of yourselves. It is a gift of Elohim. It is not by works so that no one should boast, for we are his workmanship created in Messiah Yahushua unto good works, which are Elohim, Elohim prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. He prepared it beforehand that we walk in the good works, and good works is not works. It's just, it's just rest. Because you're obedient, doing everything right, smooth day, tov day at work, tov day, you're just in obedience, you're flowing. You didn't disobey your boss, so it wasn't a hard day. You did everything right, everything came through, okay? Everything was fine. In chapter 3, verse 7, they plastered over the word precious favor, benefit, with G-R-A-C-E again. And it's a different Greek word. Of which I became a servant according to the gift of favor. And that favor is 1435. And it's the Greek word doron. D-O-R-O-N in Latin letters. Of Elohim given to me according to the working of his dunamis, his mighty power. To me, the very least of all the set apart ones, this favor was given. Doran. To bring the, it says, get spiel, but get spiel is a German word of G-O-T-T. -T. That's the, that's the G-O-T-T -T is the Germanic word. G-O-D-D -D is the word for the sun god of the Anglo-Saxons. And it pancaked or plastered over a clean word, glad tidings. And Christians, they say good news, and then they see gospel and good news in the same chapter and wonder, well, what's the difference? Well, that, the other one's a pagan sun deity where you get a spell, and the other is the glad tidings, and glad tidings goes all the way back into the Torah and the Tanakh of the first covenant. Glad tidings is there, and that's the same of good news, but I don't use the word good because that's related to G-O-D-D. -D. We use tov in Hebrew, Okay. But just to show you, the glad tidings of the unsearchable riches of Messiah among the Goy, the nations, the strangers, to make all see how this secret mystery is administrated, which for ages past has been hidden in Elohim, who created all through Messiah, Yahushua. And if we keep going, we'll get into the mysteries of the principalities and powers which G-R-C-E is. It's not mythology, not Greek mythology. It has an idol, it has a picture, it has an image, and they're still making them today, and they're still pagans, and there's Greeks doing it in Greece and other countries, and they're still worshiping these things. There are principalities and powers. They're strong men. Strong men, demonic powers that people worship and give homage to. Okay? And they, they pay, put this word on top, G-R-A-C-E, when it's being precious favor benefit, and it's the he, Greek word Doran, 1435. And then you keep looking at chapter 4, verse 7. Chapter 4, verse 7 says, But to each one of us favor, Doran, was given according to the measure of the gift of the Messiah. It's not GRCE again, it's Doran, 1435. They pancake these words all around, all these words, and some are clean and some are not. But they put these words like love, and there's several words for love in Greek and several words, of, lots of words in Hebrew, and they prescribe love in different categories. But people say in English, I love my cat, I love my dog, I love my ice cream, I love my wife. And that, 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 is, that is so degrading. The washing water down of the Angoland language, English, German, French, Scottish, a bunch of other stuff. Let's go. And that reminds me, if you say, well, you know, I speak English. No, you don't. English, Scottish, Irish, 
It's the issues. It's the, it's the language that got mixtures from conquest, kings, and governments. It's mingled. It's not pure Italian tongue. You can't mix that with the Creator, Yahuwah. You can't call Him one thing. I couldn't go to the bank and open an account with, with Bob. That's a nickname. Bobby, another one. It has to be Robert Winner. And it has to have a signature. It has to have be matched up the Social Security and everything else. My name is Eliyahu. That's my spiritual name the Father gave me in Jerusalem. I was praying to the wall. He said, don't ever call yourself that Anglo-Saxon name again. But he gave me a description how in English we give each other nicknames that have no meaning in power. And when people speak to it, they're speaking nicknames to each other that have no prof no nabi speaking to the future value. And we do that to the Creator too and our Savior. What a shame and a blasphemy of vain traditions of mind and understanding. We need to repent of what we receive from the, the forefathers. We need to repent from these sins what our forefathers gave us. <coughs> Excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Again, that's the 5463, Keras. And they pancake the word G-R-A-C-E. Let's look at, let's just talk for a minute as we come to a close. In 1773 to 79, a man by John Newton wrote a song called Amazing G-R-A-C-E. I was breezing something on my old pile of music and I was throwing away some old pagan stuff. And that's Cristiano stuff. And I ran into the song. The father told me to listen to it. Then I went to Google and Wikipedia and I studied the history. Got the whole history of the man, John Newton. With respect, I went to his mindset. And I studied the whole aspect of the British fleets where one of his ships was a merchant ship of cargo of slaves. And he wrote this song even before he repented and landed and wrote more words and put it in his hymn books, which became popular and then died away and became revised popular with more words in 1835. In that song, if you go to the roots of it, you will never find J.C. as their savior. It's G-R-A-C-E and M-E-R-C-Y. The goddess of Clementa, another pagan goddess with a picture and an image of Greek mythology worship. They have those words, but there's nowhere J.C.'s even in it. It should have never even been a Cristiano song. And then the roots get planted in 17, 1800, and then the, the revivalists and tent meetings, and, and then it comes from Europe over here, and, and revised again over here, but J.C.'s name's not even in it. And I thought, he's your savior. Toning blood is not even in it. And then I visualized myself on the ship with John Newton when he, when he sang this song and eventually wrote it later on. And he wasn't even saved in the Christian mindset then. And here's a fleet of ships that had cargo, but there's this other ship, the biggest and tallest mass and sails with a big lantern like a lighthouse on top. There's no moon and there's a storm and the storm and you're going up the seas and down the sea. You can't see nothing. You go up and you're high and you're just teeter-tottering and all the ships are doing this to each other. They're bouncing around. They can barely see each other once in a while and they will hail out what they see and who's around and they make sure they don't bump each other in the storms and then they look at the mother ship which is the British ship and you can look it up. G-R-A-C-E. With the tallest mass and a big bright light burner that led the way for the other merchant ships to be dispatched when they get to their locations. But they follow the mother of the ship that would guide them to a certain place with the merchant of the king and the queens of England. And they would say, amazing grace, the ship of grace and its light. I once was lost, but now I see I was blind in the storm. But now I see the light. And then on the bow of the mother ship of GRCE is a naked woman of grace, the pagan goddess. And that's what the song was written. 
and JC ain't even in that song. And you're not going to find you know, Ushua Mashiach either in that song. And later on, he was blended in and, and adopted in Christianity. He became famous in 1835. Look it up yourself. You see how things get preconceivedly batted on and pancaked on. In our society today, you ask your children what a a B.C. and A.D. means. They say it's before it's Christo and it's after his death. It does, well, that's not what it means. And you ask a child what Bible means, they say basic instruction before leaving earth. In another 50 years, they're going to write it in like it's pure doctrine. And they have no idea the word Bible is a pagan goddess. Biblo city with a pagan goddess. And they never use those words. Even Shaul says, give me my lanterns and my parchment and my ink. Give me my scrolls. Give me my sepers. They didn't use those words, those pagan Greek words of goddesses. So here we are today. We're crying out. We tell people, I prayed and I repented. I said, Father, when I got the revelation, I went to Jerusalem to look at my Hebraic roots. And the Father sent me there to do a documentary for the Ethiopian Hebrews. And I'm interviewing rabbis of different cultures and races, of tribes. And the Ethiopian rabbi looked at me and said, Son, you are Israelite Ibrim. You're from the house of Israel. Why are you speaking pagan European deity names and words? They shall not be uttered out of your mouth. Repent today and embrace your father Abraham, Ishak, and your cold. And I wept and cried and I repented. And I recepted my Hebrew Messiah, Yeshua. And I, that means I accepted the house of Israel and obeyed the Torah and obey the Tanakh and obey the, the new renewed covenant, marriage covenant, the ten word marriage covenant prescribed in, instruction. The word law is a Latin word it's supposed to be prescribed instructions. Ten of them for a marriage covenant. And I cried and went on the floor when I came home and I repented. I said, Father, forgive me for telling people to get saved by G-R-A-C-E, a pagan goddess, and to receive the G-O-T-T -T or the G-O-S-P-E-L-L, -L, the spell of the sun. Forgive me, Father, they should be getting the glad tidings. They should be getting the Bazorah, the glad tidings of salvation, to be grafted into the house of Israel and not be a part of a denomination with mason steps of degrees of knowledge. They go to school. I went to school to learn theology. And then I started listening to that word. It's a theology, theology. That means theos. Well, dios is Latin. Theos is Greek. And where did G-O-D come from? That's German. What does it mean? Oh, my father, what am I saying out of my mouth? Even when I was a Christian, I thought this. And then I looked at it. The word theology, theology is the teaching and knowledge of the gods. Come on, man. Open your eyes. Repent, shepherds. They call themselves pastors. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. You call yourself a pastor. It's only once in Ephesians in the New Covenant. And you look it up in the Greek, and it means shepherd. A shepherd leads people to green pastors. They don't lock them in a cage to eat their own poop and urine in the cage with the grain. We're supposed to be lead them into the fresh waters, the midmouth of living waters, and live in the green waters, pastors, not lock them up and give them the right ruling and give them the ten-word marriage covenant and Yahushua, our Messiah. And I plead with you, let's pray a prayer and repent. I ask the Father to forgive me for bringing people to the goddesses and spells of the sun. And I repented and I felt the relief of sin because you see, in every religion, in every religion, there's a form of penance, there's a form of repentance. They ask forgiveness to each other. Even mafia gangsters ask forgiveness one to another. And they feel the relief come off them. when They, re they say it's part of the spiritual uh, realm of, of, uh, of the right ruling in the atmosphere, one to another. Even without the Creator, they can ask forgiveness one to another and feel relief. I forgive you, brother. It's okay, man. You know... We all make mistakes. We just say those things. We see the fill of relief. Well, in, in, in paganism and different deities and different religions, they all have their form of penance and blood sacrifice. And some don't have blood. Some don't. Some do. But even in the rituals of paganism of the deities of the principalities of Greece, they would sacrifice a blood sacrifice to the goddess of G-R-A-C-E. 
and then go into a temple and have sex with charisma, charity, or one of Karos, or one of the, or Charma, or one of the other pagan goddesses. And the women, the, 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 the goddess temple uh, prostitutes would release these spirits into them that the priest put into them to have sex with a man to release it into them. And then they get this tranquility, salvation. And the story goes on of the Olympic stories of these particular men in the Olympics arguing with each other who's going to win because they had sex with charisma or they gave all their living to charitas and they had sex with all three so they're going to win the Olympics. Paganism. Woe is every person that partakes of, of the Greek mythology deities of Prometheus, the fire deities and the sun, of the pagan rituals of, of, the, of the rituals of the Olympics this last few months. Woe is them that partake, even though Israel needs to repent for such sins of partaking, because you partake of the pagan rituals of the principalities and the powers of paganism. We need to stay away from it. And don't utter their words and don't be a part of their paganism. Because we're gonna, he's looking for a bride without spot and blemish. People say, well, I'm a bride. And other than, they're the, they're the, the foolish virgins. No, <laughs> you're far from all of it. If you don't have the right ruling of Yahuwah and Yahushua HaMashiach. Thank you for tuning in to Eagle Saban. Let's say a prayer. Father, forgive us for the sins we have committed. Speaking those words and leading people to salvation through G-R-A-C-E and the, and the G-O-S-P-E-L-L. -L. Forgive us, Father. But they're supposed to be brought in to the, the precious favor, atoning blood benefit. They're supposed to be brought in to the glad tidings that they're grafted into the house of Israel. Forgive us for using those pagan words. Forgive us and wash us clean through the atoning blood benefit. I repent. We repent. Every woman by the sound of my voice, by the CD, DVD, or by street, we repent from our sins. We want the Ruah of Yahuwah, the Ruah of Yahuwah, the Hakadosh. To, to come upon us and fill us up with right ruling, that we'd be prepared for this last day with a true armor of light. In Yeshua's name, thank you for forgiving me, Father, and taking this off my understanding. <coughs> for them that do it the right, do, do, for them that know it to do right and do it and not, it is sin. And we know it to do right. Now you know. What are you going to do with the truth? Thank you for tuning in to Eagles Haven. Look at our playlist. Look at our other teachings, the verses, teachings, the different verses. I call them like this mess. Titles of this message is, is Precious Favor Benefit Verse the Goddess of G-R-A-C-E. Thank you for tuning in to Eagles Haven and ElihuChannel.com. We love you. Send us our, our, our email. Blog us. If there's something I, I said wrong, I might not have said the Greek words fine, fine. Break it up in syllables. Send me a letter. I take correction. I'm humble. I, I'm a, I, I live in Israel, and I'm going to school to learn. And I'm learning Hebrew. <laughs> I want to learn Hebrew. I've, I've had enough of, 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 the, of the Greek stuff, okay? But I still learn it to learn to teach the, the Brit Kadusha, the, the, the New Covenant. So I love you, and thank you for tuning in. Be Berka and Baruch in your walk with Yeshua. Hamashiach, our Mashiach, Ami.